There is a hidden crime wave in this country. It's killing an Australian woman every week and leaving the many survivors with the most horrible physical and psychological scars. Domestic violence is the crime hiding in the shadows of suburbia, in our towns and cities. A crime shrouded in shame and secrecy. And while some women find the strength to speak out about their abuse, never do we hear from the men who perpetrate these despicable crimes. But tonight, a wife basher sits down to confess. You know, there's always three sides to a story, Tara. And I'm sure you're smart enough to know that. Mine, hers, and the, and truth. the truth. Yeah, and I don't feel like I'm getting the truth from you. Admitting you beat your wife isn't easy, nor should it be. You know, I loved her. All my life. And I went on to create the monster. At the start of every morning, I would wake with dread about what was going to happen. Hundreds of thousands of Australian women suffer at the hands of the men who are supposed to love them. Angela, do you ever get used to being hit? <laughs> no, not at all. Two women on what should have been the happiest day of their lives. Angela Ivankovic and Sharon Schmidt. But when they said, I do, they are about to become not wives, but victims. Tonight, in A Rare Insight, Sharon's former husband, Steve Stainer, tries to put words to his abominable actions. It takes a lot of courage to sit here and admit, I beat up my wife. Why have you decided to do that? I don't know if courage is the right word, but, um, you know, it's something, something that I felt that I had to do. I think to send the message to, um, to other, other followers, you know, to, uh, to stop and have a look at yourself. As you sit here now, you're still quite capable of flaring up and, and hitting out. I think so. I, I think that um, you know, everybody's capable of it. How many times did he try to kill you? I think I lost count. Choking me. Knife across the throat, slamming my head into a mirror. Sharon Schmidt and Steve Stainer had been teenage sweethearts. 30 years later, they met and fell in love again. He told me he loved me for 30 years. The first time he hit you, what was that like? I was shocked. And he made fun of my shock. Sharon was trapped with an angry, violent and controlling man. This phone video filmed by Sharon's son shows Steve throwing her to the ground, but this is Steve's explanation. Yeah, I tried to give her a hug. She didn't want that. Were you really trying to hug her? Well, I, did I tried to, like I said, I tried to hug her. Um, she resisted that. You didn't throw her to the ground? Well, that's debatable, you know. Um, no, I don't believe I did, but... Did I? Finally, a court order was granted to protect Sharon from her husband, but it didn't stop him attacking her physically or emotionally. After his third breach, Steve was sentenced to six months jail. If he hadn't have gone to jail, I'd be dead. <sighs> so you didn't marry your childhood sweetheart. You married a different person. I married a monster. So why didn't you get up and just walk away? It's... I think if you make that decision very early on, 
that you're not going to stand for that. It is probably easier. The longer it goes on, the more dangerous it gets. It is safer to stay with them because you know where they are and you feel comfort in the fact that they know where you are. You're not going to upset them by them not knowing where you are. What were those days like for you? It was horrible. Uh, you meet people that, from all different walks of life, I suppose, and there's the threats that are in there and the different... different Steve types. claims his six months behind bars frightened him into seeking help for a rage he couldn't control. But even with his newfound insight and wearing the white ribbon that signifies zero tolerance for violence against women, Steve still seems to be grappling to fully accept what he's done. So you were a controlling, obviously possessive man in the home? In that environment, yeah, I was. Absolutely. Um, I believe that, that some people bring the best of you out and I believe some people bring the worst of you out. Um, Seriously? You're going to sit here now and tell me it's Sharon's fault? No, I'm not going to, well, I'm not going to say that's that. That's just what you've done. Well, no. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't believe that's what I've done. What part of you thinks it's OK to put a cigarette out on somebody, to spit at them, to threaten their life, to choke them, to run a knife blade across their throat? What part of you thinks that's OK? Sitting here, no. There's no, no part of me. Well, why did you do it then? Um, why did I do it? There really isn't a, um, a good explanation for that. Uh, I was well off the rails. And yeah, I, I, I well and truly just run off the rail. Angela Ivankovic married Peter Stoyanovsky on the 21st of May 2011. She thought he was the man of her dreams, but within a year he proved not to be much of a man at all. Angela was about to confront a reality she dealt with all too often as an emergency ward nurse. Did you ever expect to be one of those women, the, the women you treated as a nurse? Not at all. Never, ever crossed my mind. You know, these are really confronting photos to look at. Uh, for me, what are they like for you to look at? Now? Mm. Makes me cry. <laughs> I think the thing that hurts me the most is the one from his ring, the wedding ring. Why does that hurt you most? <laughs> because that was supposed to be a symbol of love, <laughs> and that's not a symbol of love. Even after the birth of their son, Goran, Angela stayed with her husband and endured his beatings until one night last year. He just jumped me. <laughs> he just physically jumped on me and he kept hitting me and I remember saying to him, just stop, what are you doing? You know, I'm the mother of your child. And he said, well, I don't give a f <laughs> you okay? <clears throat> and then he kicked me. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I'm not going to get out of this. The police finally came and they found me. And I remember just apologising, saying, oh, my God, this doesn't happen to me. I'm a professional. This doesn't happen to professionals. You know, I'm so sorry. What do you think Peter was trying to do to you that night? Kill me. For many violent men, the rage is never far away. And for many women, it's deadly. The disturbing thing about Steve and men like him is how well they hide that rage from the world. What Steve did to his wife behind closed doors is cruel and unforgivable. Were you trying to kill her? No. And yet you choked her until she lost consciousness. 
you ran a knife across her throat. What were you trying to do? Threaten her. His eyes were black. He punched me in the mouth. I said, do it again, in the hope that he, I could guilt him into not. And she said, go and do it, just do it. I know you want to do it. So I did it. Punched in the mouth. How many times? You know, again, it's, it's those moments happen so quick. I, I think when we were in the kitchen, it was twice. Um, she says you hit her about six times, punched her in the face six times. There was a couple of taps in the bathroom. You're describing your punches as taps? Punch, tap, deck. They're all words. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to work out whether, you know, whether you're trying to downplay what you did. You know, you say they're just words. And every time I have to push you and, and say, well, listen, you know, you say two, she says six. You say, yeah, there were a couple more taps in the bathroom. I mean... Okay, there were six. But... OK, but what I'm getting at is, you know, are you seriously saying that you now recognise that this was your fault or are you still trying to downplay it and still trying to shift the blame? No, definitely not. Your language speaks differently, Steve. <laughs> it, so what do I say? I don't know what she has, has said to you. Well, I've just told you. Um... You know, there's always three sides to a story, Tara. And I'm sure you're smart enough to know that. Mine, hers and the, and the truth. Yeah, and I don't feel like I'm getting the truth from you or the full extent of what you really have done. And that raises the question, you know, are you just sort of doing some PR exercise here or do you really <sighs> seriously take full responsibility for what you've done? I take full responsibility for what I've done. Sharon didn't make me hit her. Sharon didn't make me throw her to the floor. She didn't. I did that. No one made me. I had nothing to gain sitting here. You talk about PR. What sort of public relation benefit am I going to get out of this? You know, if anything, I'm going to be made... Um, I make myself look like a monster by coming on here. It's not about that. That's not what I'm here for. I accepted that what I've done is wrong. What I'm here for is to hopefully let other guys know that if you're in that same situation, what you're doing is wrong. And get some help. Sharon says she married a monster. Are you a monster? I don't believe I am. No. Do you believe he's finally recognised that he is solely to blame? No. You cannot change. He is an aggressive, angry abuser. And other survivors of domestic violence like Angela Ivankovic echo that belief. She still lives in fear of her ex-husband who, despite doing this, avoided jail, only getting a six-month suspended sentence. She says her only protection from another attack is a flimsy court order. I mean, you've, you know, seen this so closely, mm. so personally. Do you think people who are violent, like your ex-husband was, can be helped? People say they can be. But in my heart, I don't think they can be. I think they're too far gone. I don't think they can be helped at all. <laughs> because there's always going to be that rage inside him. You know, women in these situations do get killed. Um, I mean, does that cross your mind still? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. 
At least Steve has been man enough to admit his crimes and do so publicly in the hope, he says, that other men listen. Essentially, what is your message to men who are being violent and manipulative in the home? What do you say to them? You've got to stop. You've got to stop for yourself, for your kids, for your partner, for your wife, for your family, for the community. There's no place for it. And, um, and seek help. Go and get some help. And for the women who suffer at their hands, in silence, in shame, in fear, what do you say to them? It's not your fault. I don't know your circumstances, but it's not your fault. There's help out there. <laughs> Go and ask for it. Leave. Because it's not love. You might think you love him. <laughs> you may just do, but he ain't loving you back. Get out. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.